This is the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, and after using this for three months or so, I think this is one of the most misunderstood products in Apple's lineup, and for good reason. When you compare it to the previous generation, there seems to be a combination of upgrades and downgrades looking at features and specs, which in itself can be super confusing. But then when you add in real world use, a lot of those things are less important than they might seem. This has led to a whole bunch of opinions and questions surrounding what this machine can or can't do. And today I'm gonna do my best to debunk and clear a bunch of this stuff up, what's important to consider, what's not, and just my general thoughts on the M3 Pro after using it every day. So if you wanna know more about the newest MacBook, maybe you have unanswered questions or concerns, or you're just curious about what my long-term experience has been like, Stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. I bought the M3 Pro MacBook as soon as it was announced at the end of October and at that time, it was mainly just gonna be a review unit for the channel. Previously, I had the M2 Max Mac Studio that I did all my work from that I was really happy with and by no means was I expecting the M3 Pro MacBook to keep up with it, but with everything that I do personally, the experience is very much the same. Enough so that I decided to just go all in on the M3 Pro. Doing that has some obvious immediate advantages. I use this a lot at my desk, but there are times when it gets a bit stale in here and I wanna work somewhere else. Or if I'm not at home and I wanna get something done, it's nice to have the portability without having to have two separate machines. The model I have here is the 14 inch version, which I much prefer over the larger 16 inch model. I used to travel a lot with the 16 inch M1 Pro and I always found it to be more of a pain to haul around with me. So ever since then, I've tried to stick with the 14s. The one that I have here is the all new space black color, which has been great. It doesn't show fingerprints nearly as much as some other dark colors like midnight in the MacBook Air. And I don't have any scratches anywhere, including the high contact areas like the edges of the ports. I do connect and disconnect to the USB ports quite a bit, but they still look good as new. It does show dust a lot easier than the lighter models, so I do find myself cleaning it more, but other than that, I'm really happy with how the finish is holding up. That's probably the biggest change visually with this generation. The screen does get 100 nits brighter than the M2 Pro in SDR content, but it's not something that's really noticeable. And otherwise, things are relatively the same as the last two versions. It's really inside the machine where all the differences lie and where things get interesting. The MacBook that I have here is the base Pro model with an 11 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 512 gigs of storage and 18 gigs of RAM. And unlike the last two generations of Apple Silicon that were built on a five nanometer process, the M3 is three nanometers, which is something that I was really curious about. That process essentially means that the components within the M3 chip are much smaller, which can lead to gains in efficiency and battery life. Initially, when I reviewed this, the battery didn't feel that much different than the M2 Pro, and it took a while to get a sense for how much better this has been, but there has been a considerable difference in battery life over the M2 Pro. If I'm browsing the web or using this very lightly, I can get just under 16 hours on a single charge, and ramping up the use to include things like video editing and coding, it'll drop down to about 10 or so with the screen brightness at around 50 to 60%. Comparing that to my old M2 Pro, that's about a 20 to 30% increase in overall battery life, give or take, depending on how you're using the MacBook, which is outstanding. Now, I use this a ton at my desk and sometimes it might be a week or more where I'll leave this plugged into power. And some folks have expressed concerns regarding having this constantly connected to power and if it's degrading the battery. And that has zero effect on battery health. That was a pretty big problem in macOS. I wanna say pre Big Sur or Catalina, somewhere in there where like most electronics, if you left your battery plugged in, it would decrease the lifespan dramatically. I completely killed the battery on an old Intel Mac in about a year of it being brand new doing that. But Apple has gotten really good with recognizing when you leave your device plugged in all the time and will hold charging and optimize power based on that. There's also a couple other questions I frequently get related to power using the M3 Pro as a desktop machine. One is how I turn my MacBook on when it's in a vertical stand without hitting the power button. And the answer is, I don't. I just have it go to sleep and I rarely ever shut it down, which is the way to go if you have a vertical stand like this. 
Otherwise, I don't think that there is an option to turn it on without opening it. If you do know something that'll work there, feel free to pop a comment down below. But the other question that I get is a bit more complex and I do have a solution for, and that's to do with external storage. So one of the reasons why I usually go with the base storage option in my Macs is that I run external SSDs on a lot of my machines. That way I don't have to fork out hundreds of dollars more to Apple for internal storage and then I could just swap these drives out as needed. I've made multiple videos on how to do that that I'll link in the description, but one of the issues that I've noticed popping up from a lot of people trying to run a similar setup is their external drive ends up unmounting or disconnecting when their Mac goes to sleep. Essentially what's happening there most of the time is the power output is reduced on your USB ports when it goes to sleep and it's not enough to run the drive, so it just stops working and disconnects itself, but there are ways that you can address that. On macOS, if you go into your settings under battery, you'll see an option there to put hard disks to sleep. You can play around with that to see if that helps, but what I always do that in most cases should work is have your drives hooked up to a powered hub or a dock versus directly into your Mac. That way they'll always have sufficient power and you don't get any of those issues. When it comes to that 512 gig internal drive, that's much faster than the one in the M2 Pro with about five to 15% faster write speeds and up to about 95% faster read times. But it's also one of those specs that you don't really notice in the real world. Even the base M2 MacBook Air has a much slower speed than this and feels almost indistinguishable most of the time. And the same could be said for memory bandwidth as well. The M1 Pro and M2 Pro both have a 200 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth, which is insanely fast, but they dropped that down to 150 in the M3 Pro. That seems like it should be a hit to performance with only three quarters of the bandwidth, but honestly, you're never gonna notice. If you go build a high-end PC right now, those max out at just below 90 gigabytes per second. So anything 100 and above, which all M series chips have is fantastic. Like I said, this is the base model, so it comes with 18 gigs of RAM. My workflow is somewhat demanding, but by no means crazy, and it runs everything that I do here completely fine with no issues. Most of the time, I can't tell the difference between this and my old M2 Max Mac Studio, but there are a couple of scenarios where the drop from 32 gigs of RAM to 18 does come into play, one being Lightroom. I use Lightroom mostly for editing thumbnails and Instagram photos, but just opening that up on its own and editing a raw photo from my a7 IV uses somewhere in the neighborhood of nine gigs of RAM or so. It still runs completely fine and I don't notice any slowness in Lightroom alone, but the problem that I have is I almost always have a bunch of other apps open at the same time, like Affinity Photo that I kind of use in tandem with Lightroom when I edit thumbnails. And usually if I'm editing thumbnails, there's a good chance I'll have Final Cut open too. So I usually just end up closing some of that stuff down so I don't have a bunch of memory pressure on my system. The other place I see this come into play from time to time is editing videos if I have a ton of effects laid over a single clip. I've mentioned this on the channel before, but it can tend to slow down on you a lot if you have too much going on but it's really not all that big of a deal. If it ever does feel sluggish, I'll just render out a specific area of the video and it solves my issues. Just keep in mind that I'm by no means doing anything crazy. There aren't a lot of resource heavy motion graphics, basically just 4K clips with color grading and some audio plugins and whatnot for the most part. If you're getting into some heavier workflows or production level 3D effects or visuals, bumping that up is probably a good idea. The biggest slowdown that I noticed coming from the Max chip to the Pro has nothing to do with the RAM, but the rendering engine where the Pro has a single encoding engine and the Max has two. It's still fairly quick, but it might take me 15 or 20 minutes to render out a 12 to 15 minute video on the M3 Pro where the M2 Max would take about 10 to 12 minutes. Sometimes when I'm impatient, I miss that speed, but the majority of the time I just have that running in the background, but I can see where on larger projects that are hours long, that might be a pain. Uh, the actual CPU itself is more than enough for what I need and has been great. This is the model with 11 cores, five of which are performance cores and the other six are efficiency. While that might initially appear as a step back from the M2 Pro based model, which had six performance cores, the M3 Pro still comes out on top in almost every metric, but I should caution folks who work in audio a lot. I've seen a lot of info out there stating that most DAWs can't effectively use the efficiency cores and only run on performance cores leading to worse performance. So. If you work a lot with audio tools, that might be something that you wanna consider, but I'm honestly not the one that you wanna to listen to there as I don't really use those tools a ton. 
but I think it's worth noting. I'm more living in apps that are GPU heavy, and when it comes to the GPU, that's one area that I was really surprised with. This has a 14 core GPU, so down from 16 in the last generation, but it absolutely smokes it in overall performance. I said this last week when I reviewed the Samsung S24 Ultra, but tons of GPUs in different devices this year are seeing huge gains in performance with the addition of hardware enabled ray tracing, which is included in all the M3 chips this year, whether that's the base chip, the Pro or the Max. And provided that you're working in apps that are optimized for it, the GPU is much more performant. In Blender, it puts up similar performance to my old 30 core GPU in the M2 Max Mac Studio, which is kind of wild. And for what I do here, it's been super smooth. Again, I'm not doing any kind of professional 3D work or working in an animation studio. And if you're doing that, you're probably gonna want a much more powerful machine than this. But just for simple projects or learning, the Base M3 Pro chip works really well. Just in general performance wise, I have nothing to complain about, but there is a couple things that I wanna clear up. There seems to be some uncertainty around the speakers in the M3 Pro being worse than the previous generation, and that is technically true. The M2 Pro MacBook doesn't get quite as loud as the M3 Pro, but it does have a touch wider frequency response. But again, the difference is so minimal that unless you have them sitting side by side, I doubt you're ever gonna notice. The sound quality is amazing, probably still one of the best that you're gonna find in a laptop, but if you shift that to a Bluetooth connected audio device and just speaking to wireless connectivity in general, that's a different story. Now, Bluetooth works totally fine in terms of speed, stable connection, all that stuff, but I find the range is pretty terrible. I know that if you've got wireless headphones on and you're working at your laptop, you're likely not gonna go far, but for me, if I have my AirPods in at my desk and I go to grab a coffee, these cut out more easily than pretty much every other machine that I've had connected in this space. It's not a deal breaker, it's just more of an annoyance, but if my mobile devices have a much better range, Apple should be able to figure out a way to make it much better on the MacBook. All in all, there's very few things that I don't like about the M3 Pro MacBook, and I honestly don't regret moving to it from the Mac Studio at all. It's super performant, battery life is great, and it's just an all around great machine. I do think that people get a little bit carried away with how much RAM they think they need. 18 in my case has worked quite well and especially if you stick with things like productivity, graphic design, coding, that kind of thing, 18 is more than enough. If you're doing more resource heavy creative stuff with video or motion graphics, you can still get pretty far with just 18, but if you're getting into beefier projects with SFX, 3D, or you just want to have a thousand things open at once, it's probably in your best interest to bump things up a little bit specs wise. For me, I'm going to continue using this, I'm assuming until maybe the next iteration of the studio is released. And if you guys would like to see any other Macs reviewed on the channel that I haven't covered yet, let me know in the comments down below. That's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or you found it useful. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you want to see more tech related content or organize a competitive eSport league for racing snails and augmented reality, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.